Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Pen Habit. My name is Matt Armstrong, and I am, as always, glad to have you back for another pen review video. In today's review, we're going to be taking a look at an ebonite pen, and this is going to kick off kind of a string of ebonite pens. I've been in an ebonite mood lately, so um, this is a fun one to kick off that string. This is a Bexley ebonite, uh, and this pen was provided free of charge by Van Ness Pens in exchange for an honest review. Uh, no additional compensation was provided. All opinions expressed herein are my own, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, this is the amber agate finish. Um, this is one of the most interesting ebonites I've ever seen. It's kind of this really interesting caramel color with deep black swirls. It's like almost orange. I, I call this my tiger stripe pen. Um, really fascinating, fascinating ebonite. I've not seen another ebonite quite as, as contrasty or highly figured as this ebonite. The design of the pen is very, very reminiscent of the Parker Duo Folds, um, the Duo Fold Seniors from the 30s, 40s, 50s, etc. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention is this pen was created in 1998 as a celebration of the fifth anniversary of Bexley. So these are not a current production pen, but you can still find them about. Um, and the, the Van Ness pens who provided this pen have several in stock in a few different colors. So let's go through the design just a little bit. Uh, here you've got on the top, flat top, it says made in USA 1993 to 1998, five years, little medallion inset there. And you've got that black finial, uh, a gold ring and a clip. And the clip actually isn't attached to the ring. It's attached inside. You can kind of see that there's a slot there in the ring for the clip. Real nice, sturdy clip. It's folded metal clip, but it uh, does the job quite well. Pretty straightforward design. Um, the one thing I don't love about this cap is this inset gold Bexley medallion. I find this to be a little gaudy and a tacky. I don't, I don't like really explicit branding on a pen. I don't mind something along the cap band or, you know, some engraving or something like that. But this is one of the most uh, explicit in-your-face brandings I've ever seen. I don't particularly care for it on, on the, uh, the cap of the pen. The rest of the pen barrel, it, it actually expands slightly in diameter as you get toward the end of the pen. Got another gold ring and then this little black finial on the end here. Really classic design, very attractive material in my opinion. Um, the cap comes off on about one and a half turns and the threads are not the slickest in the world, but they're very tight and, and still smooth. They are a little on the sharp side though. So you can see here, um, uh, if I do it in profile, you can see pretty how sharp they are. So this is a pen you don't really want to be holding up here. Um, you, you kind of need to hold this one on the grip. Uh, then you've got a ebonite tenon, which means you could use this pen as an eyedropper most likely. Uh, it's a cartridge converter filler and it comes with a standard international converter. Um, really quite a lovely pen. I just, I like highly figured ebonite and this ebonite is some of, as I said earlier, some of the most highly figured and attractive ebonite I've ever seen. I just love this color scheme. Uh, this is this is a caramel swirl pen for me. Is is because the other thing I call it. It's my tiger stripe or my caramel swirl pen. Uh, the nib, pull this back out, is a looks like a Bach or a, yeah probably a Bach nib, um, dual color by color nib. So you've got a 14 karat gold nib that says Bexley, and then you've got this little rhodium plated accent here. Pretty standard number six size nib. Now, I've done a review of another Bexley before. I did the Bexley Equipoise, and that had an 18 karat nib, and it was one of the smoothest, most luxurious, luscious nibs I've ever had. This is the 14 karat version of the nib, and it's a, it's a really nice nib, but it does have a little bit of a different characteristic. So I'll talk a bit more about that when we get to the writing sample. So let's look at some comparisons here. We've got the Ebonite. Now, if we look at some of the higher end pens, here is the Sailor King of Pens slash Classic Pens LB5. The 
Mont Blanc 149, the Pelican M1000, and the Pelican M800. And I'd say size-wise, probably the closest you're looking at here is the M1000. Um, so this is not a, a wilting violet of a pen. This is one that's going to get noticed because it's nice and nice and hefty. Um, comparing it to some lesser expensive pens, less expensive pens, you've got the Lamy All-Star, the Twisby Eco, the Pilot Metropolitan, and here's an Estherbrook Model J. So much larger than any of those, really, in size. And then if you're looking at measurements, you've got 143.8 millimeters. So as I said, it's a nice long pen. Uncapped, it is 136 millimeters, so still quite long enough to be held without, um, without posting, which is good because this pen doesn't really post. I mean, you can kind of sit it on there, but it's not, it's not secure at all. I consider this a non-posting pen, um, so I didn't even bother measuring it. But, you know, in theory you could post it, but it's not, it's not secure at all. Uh, diameters. The difference between this and, say, the Pelican M1000 is, I'm going to go ahead and open this up, You'll notice the, the difference in diameter widths right there. So the diameter of this is 10.7 millimeters. It's 12.8 millimeters at the widest point of the barrel and 15.8 millimeters at the widest point of the cap. And being ebonite, it is 13.8, or excuse me, 13 grams uncapped and 12 grams capped or pseudo posted for a total of 25 grams. So it's a pretty lightweight pen. Now, Let's talk a little bit about ebonite. If you're new to fountain pens, you may or may not know this. If you've used many ebonite pens, you'll know they have a very different feel in the hand. They, people often call it a warmer feel. Uh, it doesn't feel quite as cold. It, it's got a little bit more texture to it, uh, in, my, in my opinion. Um, Ebonite does need a little bit of different care. You really aren't supposed to soak ebonite for long periods of time. Um, you are, you know, you, it shouldn't be exposed to ultraviolet light for long periods of time. And it can be a little on the brittle side compared to some of the other plastics like acrylics or resins. So it does require just a little bit more care. But I will say this, a lot of the vintage pens you know, the, the Watermans and the Wall Eversharps and, you know, they, they were made, the, par the early Parkers were made from ebonite. So ebonite, when taken care of, can last a long, long time. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of writing, shall we? Here we have the Bexley ebonite in the amber agate finish. And I should really quickly interrupt this and mention there are a couple of other finishes that, that this pen came in. One is a green smoke slash olive mottled finish, and the other one is a smoke amber. So the, the green smoke olive mottled is kind of a dark olivey green with swirls and, and model finishes in there. And then the smoke amber is almost a reddish orange. It's very similar in designed to this, but it more of a reddish orange color. The nib for this pen is a 14 karat gold medium. And the ink is really fascinating ink called Papier Plume Caramel. I don't know if it's Plume or Caramel, uh, if it's plume or just plume, but uh, uh, Papier Plume is a, a New Orleans-based pen shop. They have their own line of inks. This is one uh, one of them, caramel. I figured it was a great fit for this caramel-colored pen, uh, and I like this ink. This is a fun ink. Nice, nice shading. It's, it reminds me a lot of diamine autumn oak, but with more brown and less orange. So if you want that very caramely, 
yummy, you know, fleur de sel caramel ice cream kind of thing going on in your ink, this is a beautiful ink for that. And it works, it flows really nicely. I'm sure I'll do a review of it at some point, but. And you can buy this directly from Papier Plume, or I got this sample also from Van Ness Pens, who provided the pen at vanness1938.com. And now we go back to the writing sample. Here's the quote. Okay. So, really nice nib, um, very smooth, nicely aligned, nice, um, nice ink flow. With a 14K nib, you can, you know, it's, it's a pretty rigid nib, I will admit, um, but it can stand up to a little bit more um, pressure, perhaps, than an 18K nib is. And you can see here, when I, when I do put a little bit of pressure down, um, you can get a touch more ink out. Now, like I've said many times, this is not a flex nib. It is not intended to be a flex nib. So if you decide to try to use it as a flex nib, prepare to be disappointed and or ruin your nib. Um, but it can handle a little bit more pressure. So if you're someone who writes with a little bit heavier of a hand, um, a 14K nib is almost always going to be a better option for you than an 18K nib, simply because it will have more snapback. There's less chance of you um, really kind of mangling the nib. I, I shouldn't say 14K is always a better choice. In this particular case with Bexley's nibs, 14K appears to be a better choice than 18K. Uh, nice ink flow, but not too much. It's a, you know, a nice moderate ink flow. You can do a couple passes here of that ink flow, but you know, it's, it's not going to drench the paper, but it's also not the, um, you know, there's nothing crazy about it, but nice and smooth. It does have a, a touch more feedback than the 18K nib. So the 18K nib, I said, was like a one and a half, maybe a two on the feedback, on my feedback scale. This is more like a three and a half to a four. So there is more feedback to it. It's not as, as glassy smooth as the other ones. So if you're the kind of writer who likes a little bit more, likes to be able to feel the nib on the paper a little bit more. This is a nib I think you would really, really like. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it writes really well. I haven't had any skipping or hard starts. I haven't had any ink starvation with the pen. Um, I, I did, well, that's not entirely true. I did have a little bit of ink starvation with the pen because I inked it up before cleaning it first, um, which is never recommended, but for some reason I can never seem to help myself. I don't want to take the time to to, you know, wash the pen out and rinse out the pen and let it dry for a night. I just want to ink it up with something because I have no patience because I'm a child. And so this is, uh, this is a case where it really needed to be cleaned out first. Um, I used just a little dish soap, a couple drops of dish soap and some water, flushed it through, flushed it through with clean water until all the bubbles went away, let it dry overnight, and then it just wrote like a dream. And it has ever since. And I've actually been using this in my commonplace book uh, for some of the studies that I've been doing around project management in prep for, you know, when I'm actually able to interview for a new job. And uh, it has just performed superbly for that. Uh, reverse writing. Really quite a nice reverse writer. Um, very fine, very dry. Um, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. You'll do, you do notice that every now and again, um, it does have this little hard start right here. Um, that is more a problem of me not getting it aligned with the paper than it is with the pen. When I'm just writing like normal, um, you 
I just don't, I don't have um, normal. Really, Matt? Really? Uh, I don't have any of those problems at all. So it's only when I'm doing these weird squiggles and things that I do for these reviews that I, I get anything unusual with that. But really, I have to say, I am pretty impressed with the nib on this pen. Now, let me kind of go over a few big picture things to look at first. Um, as I mentioned, the, the threads can be a little sharp, and if you tend to hold the nib high, they can be a touch uncomfortable. Um, the nib is long enough that I find I can hold this grip. It's still, the grip is still long enough. I don't have to hold the threads, so it's not a huge deal. The finish on the material is pretty spectacular, but I will point out, you can see a little bit of it right here, and there's another one right here. This ebonite does have a few inclusions in it, uh, which is unfortunate. I feel like that mars the finish just a little bit, but this is polished to an absolute mirror shine. It really is one of the nicest finishes on ebonite I have ever seen in my entire life. Uh, so I, overall, I am really quite impressed with this pen. It's comfortable in the hand. It's nice and lightweight. Um, it's very nicely balanced. Uh, it per behaves very, very nicely, and it's made of just this gorgeous caramel stripe slash tiger stripe slash amber agate material, depending on what you want to call it. But uh, in general, I've been very, very impressed with this pen, and I do like that classic Parker Duo Fold uh, line that this pen takes. They, you know, Bexley's big thing when they were launched was we want to, we want to tie back to the vintage designs and the vintage materials and use those for inspiration, but using modern techniques and modern materials to go along with it. And I feel like they've done a good job here with this Bexley Ebonite. So the pen retails for about $225 from Van Ness Pens. Uh, it is not the cheapest pen in the world, but you know, Bexley pens are very well made. They're made in the US, um, very high quality, and the nibs are spectacular. So $225 for a gold nibbed pen made of ebonite really isn't a terrible price, especially when it is made as nicely as this one is. So overall, I've been very, very impressed with this Bexley ebonite. So I think that should do it for this review. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them here on YouTube or over on penhabit.com. And uh, don't forget to visit penhabit.com to see the rest of the photos and the written review. I wax poetic about caramel over on that review, the written review just a little bit. So, uh, so yeah, love to have you visit us over there. And also, please uh, don't hesitate to visit the Pen Habit sponsors and the people who provide these pens for review, because without them, the Pen Habit could not exist. I simply could not do reviews without the people who have been so generous, both viewers and retailers, in donating pens. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and show them support. If you buy from Van Ness or from the other uh, Pen Habit sponsors, Gold Spot Pens or Pen Chalet or Pen World in Belgium or, oh my gosh, La Corone de Comte or Fanto Plumo. Had a little bit of a, a brain fart there. My train of thought derailed. Uh, it, please go, go show them that you support them. When you're looking for pens, check them out first. I really would appreciate it, and so would they. And uh, they make continuing the pen habit possible. They and my wonderful, wonderful supporters, I really do appreciate you. Thank you so much. So anyway, sending all the thanks out there into the universe. I, I do appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.